Sturgis Motorcycle Rally. It's the largest motorcycle rally in the world. Not only is it bike week at Sturgis, but it's the day that we build the drum kit that I will finish out the Poison Tour with. Pulling into Sturgis is a total rush. I was here on vacation in 1989 and then here playing in 2003 with Poison. Here I am again with Poison for another show. It's 2007, but this time I'm capturing something very special, the creation of my drum kit. The idea is this, we will build and paint a kit the day of the show and play it that night. It's a ballsy move, but we're determined to do it. We decide to call on the one guy who always seems to come through in a pinch with painting, Uncle Bob Spina. Here's what. First of all, I called two months ago and said, Bobby, yes. send me this shit two months ago, right? Bobby sends it. I had to go to Anaheim and pick it up. And bottom line is I had two fucking days to get this stuff. Now we're going to stripe everything. Oh, we got to drill holes. Yes, we got to drill holes first. We're going to drill holes first, and we're gonna, actually we're going to assemble. I'm going to try to assemble three drums, and then you guys are going to cut loose because we, that way we can stay ahead of the game. And Ricky's going to play these tonight. He's going to play them tonight. We have to make sound check. So. What time we'll sound check? It's noon? No, we can make it. No, we can I think make we're going to make it. We're, Well, we're in Sturgis, uh, South Dakota at the Bike Week Rally. Buffalo Chip Campground. And this is Uncle Bob Spina. I'm Bobby Gibb with Rocket Drum Works. And I'm ready for my close-up. I'm panning for lugs. Oh, we'll see. Just, no, we're getting, getting lugs ready, getting ready to mark this, get a couple of these built so, so uh, you guys can start striping. Are drilling the first hole. on that side, I don't believe. We're good. I use three to four different kinds of flake. I use real fine uh, daisies and real fine slivers, real fine micro sequins. Then I went to uh, diamonds that are about a sixteenth of an inch big. Then I went to the bigger slivers and stuff type of deal. It's a multi-layered type of deal. Beautiful. Naturally, when you're dealing with rocket drum works, you don't want to use the normal stuff that everybody else is using. And we ain't normal, let's face it. Do I look normal to you? Does this guy here look normal to you? See, you know, look, I mean, it speaks for himself. And we're going to do something totally wild and different. See how this just jumps out? And then once I start here, Ricky type of deal, then you come back in, and then you'll come in with another color, and then put, put one of your little killer designs in there, something like that, whatever you want to do, a little rocket style, you know what I mean? See, and this jumps out, that's better than a symmetrical design type of deal. How many coats are clear on that? Let me ask you something. Did you pay for the clear that's on this drum? No. Don't worry about how much I got on it. Wow. I just got slammed hard. That was hurtful. What you're seeing here is what's called pinstriping, and it's something that's been around, actually it traces all the way back to the Roman times, or, or maybe even further back, but you can see it on some of the chariots and stuff. But it really gained popularity in the 50s and 60s on Hot Rods, and guys like Barris and Von Dutch and Big Daddy Roth uh, popularized it, and it's made a huge comeback, and now people are pinstriping everything. And it's something I learned about five or six years ago, and I learned a lot of it from Uncle Bob. We're also living in a time now where you see a lot of customized stuff. You see these build shows, people customize their house, their boats, their motorcycles, their cars. And we customize drums. Um, and I think it's really, really cool because it's your idea of what you should have and what you should be playing and how you should be expressing yourself rather than what somebody else thinks you should be doing. Um, and it's just limitless, really. The sizes, the shapes, the tones, the woods, the artwork, all of it. It's just, uh, it's really open and it's, it's a lot of fun and I love being involved with it. What you see in the background, by the way, I forgot to mention, is, uh, is an Airstream base camp and it's a trailer that was originally designed for active people that spend more time out of the trailer than in it when they go camping, people that kayak or hike or what have you. And uh, what we did was we got one from Airstream and we converted it into a mobile drum workshop and it's just worked out great. It's lightweight and uh, it does everything we need it to do. You can find out more about the base camp at www.airstream.com. Go and uh, have a look at that and maybe it's something that suits you too. Mm-hmm. 
One other thing we had to do was we had to keep telling the crew that oh, we're getting there, we're getting there, we'll be ready for sound check, don't worry. Uh, at this point, we didn't have anything ready. Um, we didn't have one drum ready at this point, but uh, well, we kept we kept plodding along. And at this point, I was kind of worried myself. The other thing we were up against is the bass drum spurs and the floor tom legs didn't show up, so we had to take them off the old kit. That was something that was unexpected. And this next scene coming up, it's pretty cool because I'm actually pinstriping right next to Bob, right on the same drum, and uh, we're just jumping right in and kind of jamming. It's kind of like doing a panel jam, but on a on a drum. Panel jams are one of those things that happen at these pinstriping conventions. Everybody just, you know, grabs a panel and somebody starts something and another pinstriper adds to it and another pinstriper adds to it, and then you have something that's completely unique and can never happen again the same way and that's kind of what's happening right here it's very very cool this was the first drum the first full drum to get done it's the uh, the left kick drum we decided to make it the left kick drum and it doesn't look like the right one so each each bass drum is different this next scene is really funny because Sean, after he finishes a drum, he always yells, Hear ye, hear ye, this drum is now complete. Mm -hmm. Uncle Bob has never heard that before, so mm -hmm. just watch his reaction when he hears it. Hear ye, hear ye! <laughs> this drum is now completed! Well, if you got nothing to do, come pick up a brush. Shut up. One of the hardest things to do in pinstriping is pull a tight turn and also pull a long straight line. And we compound those problems with the fact that we're working on a curved surface on a drum. But as you can see, Bob just uses a big old brush and he loads it up with paint and he just pulls a turn and like it's nothing. So that just comes from a lot of years of practice, just doing it. Sometimes just the fact that you have the pressure to get something done actually makes you do your best work. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. I think this brought out the best in us that day because I'm, I'm just so blown away at the work that we did on this kid. And here we are, it's the final bass drum, the final drum period, although we only have one drum assembled. It's late afternoon, doors are at six o'clock, and uh, we're just really, we're really trying to beat the clock at this point, get this thing ready to go. Uh, here Uncle Bob is just doing some touch-ups, and it's one of those kind of things you've got to be on top of it to, to do it.